Hi, welcome to the Chesapeake Biological Laboratory's Next Generation Student Interview Series. I'm Sarah Brzezinski, the Outreach Coordinator, and I'm pleased to be speaking to you today to interview one of our students, Koma. We're going to be speaking about um, how he came to study at CBL, what his thesis research is on, and what he hopes to do after he graduates. Hi, Koma, how are you doing? Hello, I'm great. Thank you. Um, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself? Where are you from? Sure. So um, my name is Koma Rai. I was born in California, um, but grew up in a city near Tokyo, Japan. Um, I'm currently a third year PhD student working with Dr. Dave Secor uh, at the Chesapeake Biological Lab. And Koma, you mentioned that you grew up abroad. Um, when you were 10 years old, what sort of experiences did you have that might have influenced you to become a scientist? Yeah, so um, I still remember when I was a high school student, um, I saw news about a research group led by Dr. Tsukamoto of the University of Tokyo. Um, and he discovered for the first time the spawning ground of the Japanese eel in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And um, I was astonished by the discovery, but also kind of shocked because um, the Japanese eel is such is widely consumed in Japan, it relates strongly to our culture. So I think that was the moment when I kind of noticed that there's still so much to learn from the ocean. And that was definitely one of the experiences that influenced me to become a scientist. That's really cool. Um, so after high school, uh, what did you end up getting your undergraduate degree in and where did you study? So I got my undergrad um, in Hokkaido University. I did some research related to physiology and the ecology of Japanese eels um, and got my undergraduate degree in fishery science. That's awesome. So you were really able to pursue um, the passion that you had in high school through your mm -hmm, undergraduate degree. Um, and how did that evolve into your graduate studies? What drew you to the Chesapeake Biological Laboratory? So yeah, I was actually thinking about pursuing a PhD in Japan until um, I came across an exciting paper written by my current research advisor, Dr. Dave Secor. Um, I was just fascinated by the research done by Dr. Secor, um, which involved using novel methods um, to reconstruct migration for a wide range of species, including um, American eels and sturgeon, the striped bass. And um, he also collaborates with scientists around the world and advises state and federal agencies on fishery stock assessment. So I thought that pursuing my PhD under his mentorship um, and studying here at UMC-CBL will equip me with the research experiences to achieve my future career goals. That sounds great. Um, you mentioned stock assessments and management. Do you have an interest in pursuing a career related to management or academia? Um, yeah, I actually do. Um, I really want to uh, collaborate with scientists around the world to manage um, fish that uh, crosses uh, international boundaries. I think that experience here at CBL and the connections I made with uh, scientists around the world will really help me achieve that future career goal. That's amazing. International management um, a fishery has to have a lot of complexities. Um, mm -hmm. How do you feel that your education at the Chesapeake Biological Laboratory is helping prepare you to address those complexities? So, yeah, like I said, um, there's all, in the Chesapeake Biological Lab, there's a lot of uh, leading scientists from very wide, different uh, ranges of scientific fields. So I learned a lot of interdisciplinary work here at CBL. So, and a lot of, uh, like I said, international connections. I think that will play a key role in achieving those goals. That's awesome. Sounds like an interesting career path. Um, Koma, do you have a favorite graduate course that you've taken or a favorite course project, something that's been particularly interesting? Um, so I think, well, I've enjoyed all the courses I've taken so far, but I think especially the fish ecology course, um, uh, the proposal exercise in the fish ecology course uh, was great because, um, it really helped me uh, develop my scientific uh, knowledge and writing pr research proposals. Oh, that's cool. So you actually had to develop a research proposal as if you were applying for mm -hmm. grant funding. Mm -hmm. That has some nice practical applications. Has there been a particular experience at the Chesapeake Biological Laboratory that stands out for you? 
Yeah, so probably I think the best experience at CBL is that I got to meet and actually collaborate with the world's leading scientists in the field of fish ecology and fisheries science and management. I know, I always think it's funny that Dr. Secor literally wrote the book on migratory <laughs> fish ecology. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a bit about what you're researching for your thesis? Um, you know, you have this interest in international research. Is that at all involved in your graduate studies? Absolutely. Um, so um, my research focuses on uh, the migration behaviors of Atlantic mackerel. You can see that in my background. Um, and it's a commercially important pelagic schooling species uh, in the Northwest Atlantic. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but um, I use these small calcium carbonate structures called otoliths or ear stones, um, which are found in the inner ear of the fish. And I think these otoliths are super cool because these small structures contain a lot of information about the life history of the fish. And just like tree rings, um, these otolith forms rings around the core. And by counting those rings, you can actually tell how old the fish was. And more importantly, um, by measuring the chemical composition of the otolith, um, it will allow you to reconstruct the path the fish took as they migrated. So using these archived otoliths, otoliths from the 1970s, um, my research focuses on reconstructing migration patterns of the Atlantic mackerel over the past five decades. Wow. So um, why, why would someone who doesn't have a background in fisheries science care about your research? So um, I think it's important to care about managing Atlantic mackerel stock, not only because they are commercially important, but also because they play a critical role in the ecosystem by serving as food for larger animals like seabirds or marine mammals or other commercially and recreationally important fish like striped bass. So um, if Atlantic mackerel de decline, it will have a profound impact on the marine ecosystem. Wow, that sounds like an impactful species to be researching. Um, Koma, what does a day look like for you as a scientist and as a student? So every day I wake up early uh, to go to the gym to refresh my mind and kind of get ready for the day. Um, when I get to my office in the morning, um, I usually check my emails to see if any of my papers have been accepted for publications, which I usually don't find any. <laughs> but anyway, um, I usually start focusing on writing scientific papers or proposals when my brain is still fresh in the morning. Um, I also spend a lot of time reading literature related to my research to kind of determine what the gaps are in the field and how my research can help to fill them. Um, and in the afternoon, I usually focus on lab work, um, sectioning otoliths or accounting uh, growth rings to determine the age or analyzing the data that I've already collected. It's nice to have that sort of structure to a day. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so Koma, is there something that has surprised you about your research or that you think would surprise other people? Yeah, so like I said before, I think um, otoliths are the coolest structures because they can tell you so much about the fish's life history. Um, I think they're one of the most useful tools for fishery scientists, not only because they allow you to estimate the age and growth, but also because they allow you to find uh, the exact date when the fish was born by counting the daily growth increments. Um, also, since it's so much so difficult to observe fish movement underwater, um, by measuring the chemical composition in the otolith, um, it really allows you to reconstruct the entire course of their life cycle. So I think otoliths are really cool structures. Um, so Koma, is there any advice that you would give to say a 10 year old who's interested in pursuing a career in science, technology, engineering, or math? So yeah, that's a great question. So uh, I think uh, the advice I will give is to stay curious and ask questions about the things around you. Um, simply go outside or visit a museum and ask questions about the world around you. Um, then if you can, like try to explore that question using books or the internet to look for the answer. And if you find something that really interests you, um, I think you should keep on pursuing it. I think that's great advice for kids and adults. Mm -hmm. Staying curious is always a good thing. 
Mm -hmm. um, so Como, what are the next steps in your education and your career? So, um, well, after the COVID restrictions are relaxed, uh, I think I like to participate more in scientific meetings, which I think will be a great opportunity to network and meet experts in my field and kind of stay up with up to date with the research. Um, I'd also like to see my see some of my research results to appear in the next Atlantic mackerel stock assessment. That's a really nice application for the research. That's really cool, Coma. Um, so just building off of my last question, um, where, where do you hope that you'll be in 10 years? So, well, I hope to get a position in academia or a government agency and hopefully collaborate with scientists from around the world um, to provide, provide scientific advice to help manage transboundary fisheries. That sounds really interesting, Coma. Um, hey, listen, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me today. I really appreciate the opportunity to get to know you better and get to learn a little bit about what you're researching. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Coma, and thank you everyone for joining us. Have a nice day.